Good evening, I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. This is the Fleet Response Working Group Sensitive Information Sharing Environment uh, 1130 update after the uh, National Hurricane Centers come out with their 11 o'clock update. It's really fascinating what's going on with Hurricane Ida. The winds remain at 105 miles per hour. However, as the hurricane reconnaissance flights have been going through it all evening, it's finding that the central pressure is dropping about two millibars per hour. This is significant because ultimately when the pressure drops, the winds do come up. So what the Hurricane Center has done, as a matter of fact, you can see uh, from the uh, latest uh, advisory here, uh, the tropical storm force winds have become rather uniform and spread out about 120 miles from the center. So that's 240 miles on either side uh, of the center. And you can see that uh, dot right in here. Uh, that is the uh, radius of hurricane force winds that you can see around the storm. So it's still a category two hurricane. But look at this forecast. I'm going to dive in here a little bit closer so you can see. It's category two now, but by seven o'clock tomorrow morning, it's forecast to be a category four. This is incredible and incredible. Uh, strengthening, deepening is going on as we speak. The winds just haven't caught up to the pressure dropping yet. Uh, I have a couple of satellite images I want to show you. Then I'm going to come back uh, to this track because it's pretty amazing what's going on. Here's a GOES satellite image uh, following the evolution of Ida. And you can see towards the end here where that red area is really starting to wrap around the eye. And look at that now. We have almost a pinhole eye, which tells me this storm is almost at category three already, headed for category four. I'm going to dive in a little bit closer. There's a, a sector called the mesoscale sector where the GOES satellite can zoom right in on the hurricane and take an image every minute. So this is the last two and a half hours of Hurricane Ida. Uh, at one minute imagery. Take a look at this. You can see it's very smooth loop and look at these thunderstorms growing around the center of the storm, closing off the eye. Now we still don't see clearly, this is infrared imagery, we don't see clearly through the eye, but look at this right here, right at the end there. And I'm gonna just let this loop one more time so you can see what's going on because that center eye right in there is telling me that that storm is rapidly, rapidly intensifying. Next time the airplanes fly in there, I'm sure they're gonna find winds of 110, 120 knots, uh, which are 130 or so miles per hour. This storm is undergoing rapid intensification. I'm gonna back out here and go full screen and show you uh, Geo Collaborate because there's some interesting things going on. Not only is the forecast for it to become category four and to make landfall at category four intensity, uh, take a look at this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here and take a look at the, uh, the wind field. First of all, how wide that wind field is. And now look at the path that it's on. Here is New Orleans right here. So already the tropical storm force winds are making a beeline for uh, New Orleans, but if you take uh, the path that this is moving on, it looks like New Orleans is uh, about to be uh, hit directly uh, by Hurricane Ida. Uh, this is a very rare occurrence, although last year they did get hit by a Category 2 storm, uh, but uh, this is forecast to be a Category 4 storm. Notice that the three states are now red. Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama have all declared states of emergency. And so that means that uh, uh, things are, are going downhill quickly. Uh, the governors are just positioning themselves to be able to get federal support and to be able to call out the National Guard uh, when, that is, uh, when that is necessary. So um, this is what uh, the latest uh, development is. You can see from the, the, the width of the tropical storm force winds, Look at from the beginning when it was approaching Cuba and then it developed hurricane force winds. Notice each of the wind fields, tropical storm and hurricane force are widening. They're getting wider 
broader. That means it's going to have a much larger impact when the storm makes landfall tomorrow afternoon. Now, the outer bands are already reaching part of southeastern Louisiana, uh, but the core of the storm, the tropical storm force winds and then the hurricane force winds, won't make landfall until tomorrow mid-morning till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the center uh, comes ashore. However, now that the hurricane is undergoing rapid intensification, I do anticipate by the morning advisory, we're going to have a Category 3 or possibly a Category 4 storm on our hands. So those of you who did not evacuate really need to hunker down. Make sure that you um, close all your uh, windows if you have boards that you've boarded up and uh, just try to make it through the next uh, 12 hours during the day tomorrow. So there's going to be a long period of time where the winds are going to be blowing strong, the rain is going to be falling at incredible rates, and uh, rates that I think that uh, probably uh, the pumps may not even be able to keep up with. Matter of fact, uh, I did uh, talk with Jim Williams, um, who is the private sector uh, liaison for the State uh, Emergency Operations Center, and I asked uh, Jim, I asked him about uh, the pumps and how they might be able to uh, handle uh, that rainfall amount. And uh, here's what he said. Can you tell me about the situation with uh, rainfall and uh, the pumps in New Orleans? Uh, how fast can the pumps pump out uh, water? I've heard the limit is about an inch of rain per hour. Is that is that correct? Well, the way the pumps were, this, the way the system is designed is it can handle one inch an hour for the first hour. And then a continuous rainfall of half an inch an hour beyond that. Um, and up until the point to you reach six inches. Um, so you, you look at that, that's probably about nine hours of steady rainfall of a half inch or greater. If it goes beyond that, then they are exceeding the capacity of the pumping uh, system for the city. Um, and, and that's not to take into the effect that you might have a period of time where you get two to three inches an hour, which is, you know, is always likely during these during these these storms. If you get a band training over a certain area, it's not unusual to get six or eight inches over a two or three hour period. So uh, the system is designed to be able to support kind of normal rainy day operations and can surge during during uh, inclement weather, um, but uh, and the status of the pumps, as I appreciate it right now, that of the, the 99 pumps that are that are uh, serviced the city of New Orleans, there's only one that's down for uh, the for maintenance right now. Um, it had a, a catastrophic failure, um, as I appreciate it, um, but that, it's not something that's going to significantly impact the overall system. It was so, a, it was a smaller uh, backup pump. So when the when the rain starts, and let's just say you have a rainfall rate of one or two or maybe even three inches uh, an hour for a couple of hours, if you mm -hmm. overwhelm the pumps, does that just mean that they continue to pump and you flood until the pumps can pump it all out? Or yes. do, the, do the pumps need to take a rest? No, no, they can work in continuous operation. So okay. if you get a surge rain, uh, like you were describing, uh, you will get uh, what we refer to as kind of backwater uh, flooding or, you know, urban flooding um, where it gets pooled in the streets um, and in low lying areas, um, but they will eventually catch back up. So there you have it. The pumps should be able to catch back up because they can run continuously after about 36 hours or so, they will have to, um, uh, cycle down and uh, and then uh, come back up again. But here's uh, where we stand. So uh, for the 1130 update tonight, uh, we have a category two hurricane. I suspect when we wake up in the morning, we're going to have a category three or perhaps even a four hurricane that's going to be bearing down on the city of New Orleans. This is a catastrophic storm. It's going to do lots and lots of damage. And hopefully the people who have stayed have hunkered down 
and can get through it. We'll have another update tomorrow morning around 1130 after the 11 a.m. update. I'm Dave Jones, meteorologist with Storm Center Communications and GeoCollaborate. Thanks for watching this update. We'll keep you going through tomorrow and uh, we'll show you all sorts of satellite imagery. Talk to Jim Williams a little bit more about a couple of other topics for the Fleet Response Working Group and the sensitive information sharing environment. Thanks so much for watching. Be safe and we'll see you tomorrow.